Somewhere. God is the beginning and the end. You are preaching a sermon. Have you not known yesterday for which you deny Jesus? You deny Jesus in your shop. You deny Jesus in your secret place. You deny Jesus because of marriage. You deny Jesus because of contract. You deny Jesus because of a position that you are pursuing. But I know that your day of visitation is coming. Cool down. Don't be in a hurry. So that you don't hurry into death. You may hurry into destruction. You may hurry yourself. Ah, oh, Mr. Criminal. Christmas is coming. Ah, oh, celebration is coming. You want to swear. You want to have cars that you didn't work for. Wealth you didn't work for. So that you go to your city and be able to wear a big guy, a big guy, and that's what's addressing you. You don't want to wait. My Lord, Haribo Sankaba Shaya Kaba Kuriyalama. We give you the glory to that. May your wind hit the church. May your wind, the wind of revival, be thou glorified in the name of Jesus. I like to draw your attention to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 2. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 2. And somebody else, get me Psalm 85, verse 6. Habakkuk 3, verse 2. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Renew them in our days. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. Can somebody read Psalm 85, verse 6? Will you not revive us again? Will you allow us go like this? That your people may rejoice in you. Thank you. Will you not revive us again? Will you let things go the way they are? Lord, is this the best you can do for the church? Father, will you let the rapture catch the church in this mood? Will thou not revive your work in the midst of the year? How many persons here have seen revival before? Have you ever seen revival? 
I'm not asking you, have you seen a program put together by the church called the Revival Meeting? I want to ask tonight, have you ever seen Revival breaking forth into the church? Look, listen tonight. Revival is not something you claim by faith. The message I'm bringing tonight, I have a hard desire that this message will provoke passion in somebody's heart. I have a hard desire that this message will bring a revolution to the church. I have a hard desire that the message of tonight will sweep across denominations. That this message will sweep across even Catholicism, Protestantism, Evangelicalism, and even affect the Spiritists. Revival cannot be a local affair. When revival comes, it cannot be the property of Assemblies of God. It can't even be limited to Pentecostals. It will flow. One of these days, I have a hard desire that as a Catholic priest gets into the sanctuary to perform, the power of God will hit him on the platform there. And he will come proclaiming Jesus and speaking in other tongues. It is now. I am one of those who believe. I desire that revival should precede the rapture. If revival does not come before the rapture, there will be many negative surprises. Come God. Can you lift up your hand and say, Come, O oh Lord. Say it again. Say it again. I'm handing over to you a prayer burden. I want to hand over to us a prayer topic this particular day. I'm talking tonight about the wind and casualties of revival. Wind and casualties of revival. Revival is going to come like a big wind. It won't come like an ordinary wind. It will come like a hurricane. It can even come like cyclone wind. Have you seen a big wind that carried along? Anything on its way, it will clear it. It can carry away big homes, big vehicles. Let it come from the east. Let it come from the west. Let it come from the north. Let it come from the east. The will of God is at the end of this program. God will plant a spiritual borehole in this church. And out of the borehole shall flow. Men shall come from the east, west, north and south. And they will jump into the river and find solution. I want you to join me to Ezekiel chapter 37. And we are going to read that passage together. It's a great revival passage of the Holy Read. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. Let's read it like we have been doing. I'll read verse 1 and we'll read 2 till here we're going to stop. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord. And set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. I want you to know something before I read on. Number one, there were very many, yet very dry very many and very dry very many and very dry very many numerically they were great but spiritually they were very dry very many permit me to say this before we continue tonight you don't know the spiritual condition of a church by the numerical strength a church 
maybe 10,000 in attendance, but it's a fellowship of carcass. Is somebody hearing me tonight? It's not all of attendance is important, but we don't depend on the numerical strength of a church to say our church is alive. We may be the highest numerically speaking, yet the language of Ezekiel comes there were very many. And what? Very many. I, I, I want you to know that. There were what? Very many. And what? Very many. And very dry. Does that not draw a vivid picture? Of some congregations today, very many. In some places, it looks like a social club where men and women go to socialize. There were very many, yet very dry. That's what verse 2 says. And then 3, he asked me, Son of mine, can this bones leave? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. <laughs> Hear the word of the Lord. Let me repeat what I said the first night. The thing that will bring about revival is the word of God. May we distinguish positive psychologists and the word of God. The word of God is quite different from positive thinking philosophy. Any learned unbeliever can dish out some of these positive thoughts. If the church must leave, let's get back. The Bible says, Professor to these boys and say to them, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign law says to these boys. I will make bread enter you and you will come to life. Join in reading that passage. Everybody join in reading that passage. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the bread. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four wings, O bread. Break into this slain, that they may live. I prophesied as I was commanded. And let me talk to those who are preachers of the word of God. If we get our messages from the floor, from the audience, revival cannot hit the church. If we preach what the people want to hear, then revival cannot come. The Bible said, I 
prophesied as I was commanded. The owner of the church knows the right diet for the church. And when a man of God goes to him, if he's spiritually connected, if he is current with the Holy Spirit, he will bring the message. The man of God said, I prophesy as I was commanded. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. That is what man said. No more hope. Man is saying, we shall die in this condition. Man is saying, there is no hope. This is what man says. But, 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 but. They say our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. We are cut off. But look at what he said in the next verse, verse 12. Let's read. Therefore, Thank you, Jesus. Man is saying we are hopeless. Man is saying, can water come out of the rock? But the Almighty God is saying, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from there. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Amen and amen and amen. When we talk of revival, what is really revival? Revival is just cutting from a Latin root word. Meaning to live again. To regain a life. To receive a life that has almost expired. A life that is no more there. What is the intention of this program? That life will come back to a dead bone. You will leave. Oh my God. There is a good wind coming. I sense the wind coming. It is going to give life. He said, I will cause bread to enter into you. Somebody will rise up. No matter your condition before this program, there is hope, there is life, there is power, there is glory, there is spirit for your life. Revival is about spiritual awakening that will result into passionate prayer that men and women will become more serious with the Almighty God. A new experience of conviction so that men whose conscience have been captured by the devil I sense God and I see God liberating them this evening I see the power of God coming upon you he's taking you back to somewhere somebody will have a person and when we begin to talk about revival I want you to focus on personal revival tonight God you're going to have another experience of the Almighty God. God will come alive upon you again. His glory will come fresh upon your life. That anointing that has evaporated. I see God tearing the heavens tonight. Letting loose His glory upon your life. That you might be what God says you're going to be. I see an advertisement tonight. Wanted, wanted, wanted. Agents of revival. I mean you, you God, like I say, If people can be agents of Satan Can you vote to be agent of revival? God is going to use you in your own corner You are going, God is going to use you To spark of fire, to spark of revival Yes, listen I can't pass through this generation like any other person I will not pass through this generation God has a reason for preserving you till now And let me tell you tonight You are the woman that the millennium have been looking for If women can cause the downfall of people Another woman can cause the rise of people If man can cause the downfall of a church Another man can cause the rise of a church when you were created, you, are, you were created a special species. You are not the product of biological accidents. 
God has an agenda for you. And let me tell you, you won't die until that agenda is fulfilled. You will not die until the purpose of God for your life is fulfilled. And I see God releasing fire in your bones from tonight. I see the Lord releasing fire. The fire of revival shall burn in your bones. That you may be what God says you're going to be. And go where he says you're going to be. When we are talking about revival, we are talking about heavy rain, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. How can you remain a Pentecostal without Pentecost? Don't tell me you received the Holy Ghost in 19 Abraham, spoke in tongue last in 19 Moses. Are you still current with the Holy Ghost? Ask your neighbor, when did you speak in tongue last? When we begin to have committee members who spoke in tongue last nine months ago and they are still in the committee, the church is in trouble. When we begin to have departmental leaders, departmental who stand to teach on the school without Pentecostal experience. And how can the power of God flow? Listen. God forbid that we shall begin to have orthodox service in a Pentecostal church. Any day we we'll begin to have orthodox service. Routine service. According to liturgy. No glory. No power. When we are asking for revival, do you know what we are asking for? We are saying, God, shift my program. Install your own. Listen to me. When we are asking for revival, I want to say tonight revival is also a dangerous prayer. I'm a big guy, I'm a big guy, and that's all. You don't want to wait. When we are saying God send out revival, we are saying God sack some workers. When we are saying God, send out revival. Do you know what we are saying? Papa, overhaul the dickens and deaconesses. When we are saying God, send out revival. Do you know what we are asking for? We are saying God, send some pastors to home. When we are saying send out revival, do you know what we are asking for? God. Make some evangelists that they may longer, no longer be marketable. Because when genuine revival comes, some evangelists will go out of job. Are you still looking for revival? Are you still looking for revival? When we say God, send our revival, we're saying God overhaul the presbytery. Overhaul the general council. When we say in send our revival, we are saying God. Cause some general overseers who have converted the churches into merchandise center. Father, hit them with revival that merchandise centers shall be closed up. It will come over. I see the wind coming. I see the wind coming. I see the wind coming. If you want it to come, lift up your hand and say, let it come, oh God. Can you shout, let it come, oh God. Say it again, say it again tonight. Say it again, say it again. We're talking about Holy Ghost. You know what? The Christianity that I saw, when somebody gets born again, the next thing he's looking for is Holy Ghost baptism. But when the church brought in the language, you break it through. Even the poor people get born again, they are looking for breakthrough. And in that sense, what is the breakthrough? A kind of open door. 
that is based on materialistic In every church, there are two members, participants and executive observers. Help me ask your neighbor, who are you, participant or executive observer? <laughs> you watch others talk in tongues, you are an observer. You watch others donate. Come down. Listen. I have a respect for this church. If you go to any church and the only people you see is young, young people, that church is a dangerous church. Because when the young men will go mad, there will be no adults to check them. Is somebody getting what I'm saying tonight? And if you get into a church and the only people you see is old, old people, grey that church has no future. The church has no future. Because by the time the grey hair men and women will leave the scene, there will be no replacements. But when I look at the left, I see young people, I look at the right, I see the aged people. When the young people come up with their zeal, the aged will come with their experience. It will produce a postal of balance. And that's why I don't know what you're looking for. All that you need to make heaven is available. All that you need to live is available. All that you need to have open door is available. The Lord wants to do it in your life. We are looking for revival. When revival comes, our services shall be punctuated with miracles. Our services shall be punctuated with miracles. You know, I am sick of churches. We are pastor. We spend one hour making announcements. 30 minutes suspending people. 20 minutes excommunicating others. Another 30 minutes listing those who should be who should see the committee. And then the next 10 minutes, song leader, can you lead us? Let's collect offering. I'm not talking to this church alone. I'm talking to the entire churches. When the church degenerates to that point. And I can see the Holy Ghost hanging by the door side saying, Give me a chance in the church, I want to perform. <sighs> when we think of revival, we're saying, God, visit us with your glory, visit us afresh. Let there be God consciousness. Let us see you. Let it begin from my family. We are talking about sudden intervention of the Almighty God. Do you know God is not a Methodist? Our services should not be predictable when revival comes. If you have a predictable service, then the Holy Ghost is not fully in charge. Yes, by now, from 9 to this, there must be Sunday school now. From there, this. You can stay in your car and predict how the service will be like. When you come to a level where members will stay in their vehicles and homes and predict the day's service. But I ask, where is the place of the owner of the church? He said, I will build my church. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not, cannot, must not, will never prevail against the church. Come and take over our services. Come God. When we talk about revival, we mean this valley filled, of, full, filled with bulls, dry bulls, that God will cause them to rise again. 
Buwa mama, gumu madu, opuku ganim. Buwa mama, gumu madu, opuku ganim dosa. Ji, ova buji nake, onye pu rime, kandi wu rawu site na wu bile. Somebody is still here. If you are still here, you won't know when the wind passes. Somebody is still in this hall. But God is selecting agents. Agents of revival, men of glory, men of power, men of great anointing. Shanda la braka saya la mundari lama Gamu sanda Can you wear your soul? What you are now? Is that the best that you can be? Your current Christianity I want to ask Is that the best that you can be? Is that all that God can make out of you? Mm mm this message to be punctuated with this particular song. See them once again. Melugu inandega. like this will you leave your church is this the best for the church is there nothing else the church can be is there no greater glory that one 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 clay could manifest i'm not talking about how much you make in a month can this place be a spiritual center Overflow in this place, my God. Are there no lay men that will be anointed that will perform signs and wonders? Are there no men that God will pick up? Listen to me. God's usage has no clergy laity dichotomy. Does somebody hear what I'm saying to God can raise a woman here and use you to heal the sick more than the pastor. God can raise a man here. I don't want to know when you started. I don't want to know how long you have been in the church. I want to know what God wants to do in you, through you, and with you. And this is the day. If you fail God, posterity will not forgive you. If you fail God, as we celebrate women of God, we are still looking for women that will be mighty vessels, women that will do great things, women that will pray down revival, women that will cause the hand of God to move. Papa, let it come in my days. I want to see. 
have read many people in the books. I've read stories from books. I have read stories in the Bible. But Father, in my own day, in my days, in my days, when we talk about revival, we mean God. Let the ark of God be brought back. When we talk about revival, do you know what we're talking about? The supernatural river in Ezekiel that is deepened and widened and bringing life wherever it flows to. As I look at the church, revival means the ark. The, in fact, the outbreak of God so many presents. Let's look at the church. What is the occasion? Why do we say we need revival? Number one, spiritual dryness. Are we not experiencing it? A cabodism. A departure of the glory of God. Empty hands are laid on empty heads. Listen, church. The church that I know. A member can walk out and kneel before the altar. And when he kneels, what is he expecting? He's expecting that an anointed hand shall be laid. But when empty hands are laid on empty hips, it looks as if nine inches block is placed on somebody's head. This is your part. As revival comes, your hand can heal the sick. Your hand can raise the dead. Cripples can walk. The days of miracles are not yet over. Listen, assemblies of God, this is our 75th year, and we are celebrating our Pentecostal heritage. We are not celebrating dryness. We are not celebrating graduation in politics. ungodly democracy we should celebrate our Pentecostal heritage that we are still current with the Holy Spirit that the power of God is still available as it was church listen it is not enough to stand on the platform and criticize fake powers let us produce original let us produce original it us Counterfeit presupposes good money. If there is counterfeit in the market, it means there is good money somewhere. And God has given us the privilege of producing the good money. I want a church that will be soaked in the Holy Ghost and not a church that will sweat as a result of dancing. Sweating as, listen, when did God visit us last? When did God visit us last? I don't mean when did we dance last and until we, we, we started sweating. That is as a result of physical exercise. When did God visit us last? Do we have praying people? Instead of tears for others, we are having tears for personal sympathy. Come afresh upon us. That's why the man said, We don't know revive us. Will you let us go like this? Is that all? Is that all? Is that all, God? 
when we think of revival, as I look at prayerlessness, when men are too busy to pray, too busy to seek God, Satan has conquered the private prayer life of many people in the church. And let me tell you, like I said the other night, revival, uh, backsliding cannot be automatic. The devil will first of all conquer your prayer life. When we are too busy, hasty commas and hasty goers in the presence of God, then how can God move? We are having routine services and not revival services. Let it come in my day, 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 in my day. When we talk of revival, what is your spiritual appetite like? How many are praying? How many have a hunger for God? Listen, know, revival is coming. Let me challenge us. The Orthodox people warned us and they said, don't criticize us yet until you attain the age that we have reached. I am privileged to speak in Anglican communion from city to city, even in this country. And I see that there is a wind blowing in the Anglican communion. I see them talking in tongues. I see mighty revival. I see hunger. If a program is organized in the Anglican church, if it is five o'clock before five, all the elders everywhere shall be seated. Listen. The master said, when the son of man will come, will he find faith? And he said, people will come from the east, west, north and south and sit down with Abraham. Why children of the kingdom Children of the kingdom. Those who say they have certificate of occupancy, they will be coming to life. They shall be thrown away.
all under conviction as a result of the police. But we see them walking in the church. We see them crying. But we see them get on again. If we continue with this level of growth, what is the future of the church? is plentiful, but laborers are still Well, if you like, study it.